So let's go ahead and briefly just look at a gene and see what we find. Let's look at the gene for actin. Okay, so this is the gene for Homo sapiens, that's us, humans, beta actin. Now, do you remember actin? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, actin makes up our microfilaments inside our cells as part of our cytoskeleton. You'll remember that microfilaments are the smallest type of cytoskeletal component. So this tells us all about a gene. And where are we? We're at NCBI. This is a free website, and it stands for the National Center for Biotechnology Information. So all of the genes and all the sequences that have been found are located on NCBI. You can go and search them here. So let's go ahead and look. This is Homo sapiens beta actin, and it says it's on chromosome 7, and it says that the gene for this is actually 10,454 base pairs of DNA. So now we know how big this particular gene is. Um, it talks about where the organism came from, Homo sapiens, what authors and what papers deposited this here, and then it gives a summary of the gene. So this gene encodes one of six different actin proteins, and it talks a little bit more about this particular actin. This one's involved in the cytoskeleton. Now, as we go down, there are lots of information about um, the 10,000 base pairs that are found in beta actin, in the beta actin gene. And I'm going to keep going down to the end. We'll come back to some of this in a second, and you're welcome to come back and look at it on your own. But here, it actually shows the sequence of all 10,000 nucleotides in this gene, starting with nucleotide 1, C, G, 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 A, and it goes 60 by 60. There's 10 in each little block, and there's 60 in each row. So you can see all of the nucleotides that are found in the beta actin gene. And here we go all the way down to the bottom. We see, there we go, 10, 4, 4, 10, 4, 4, 1. So that's 10, 4, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. 10,454 nucleotides in beta actin. And this isn't a huge gene. This is actually quite a small gene. Now, if I go back up to all of this interesting material that they tell us about, one thing that I wanted to see is show you is there's something here called the messenger RNA. This tells us that the messenger RNA is going to be composed of the parts that encode 5001 to 5078, the nucleotides that encode 5939 to 6067, uh, nucleotide 6202 to 6441, and then there's one, two, three more pieces. Now, what do you think those pieces are? Yeah, those are the exons. Those are the pieces that are going to stay together. So everything in between these segments is going to be spliced out as an intron. So that's the messenger RNA. And so if we actually want to see what the messenger RNA transcript is going to look like, we click on this. Now remember, the beta actin gene is about 10,000 base pairs. Let's go ahead and look at the piece of messenger RNA now. All right, so when I click on this, it sends us to the uh, beta actin messenger RNA. Why don't we look at the current version? Because, of course, it's good to look at the most updated version. And we can see that even though the DNA gene is over 10,000 base pairs, the messenger RNA is about 1,800 base pairs. So, of course, the messenger RNA is much smaller, and we know that's partially because all of those introns were spliced out. Now, let's go ahead down. There's a lot of information here as well. But let's go to the bottom and look at the RNA transcript. All right, look, here it is, and it's much smaller, right? Only 18, 1,800 nucleotides rather than 10,000. Um, and if we go up to the top here, it'll tell us more features about this particular um, piece of messenger RNA. It tells us um, that if we want to look at the protein, we can click here. And they will actually translate the piece of messenger RNA for us. Now, remember, um, it's going to start. It's not going to start and translate the entire thing. The ribosome is going to start at the five prime end and go along until it finds the first AUG, and that will encode methionine. That'll be the beginning of the protein, and it will end when it hits the first stop codon that it encounters. 
And that piece of messenger RNA that was about 1,000 nucleotides in length, well, that's going to encode 375 amino acids. So now we're looking at the protein. And if we go down to the bottom here, we can see... Eventually, once you get to the very bottom, there it is. Here is the sequence down here under origin. This is the sequence for the amino acids that encode beta-actin. And you can see that, as it said before, the protein is going to be about 361. That's 371, 72, 73, 74, 75. 375 nucleotides. And you can see that it starts with M. M is the single letter abbreviation for methionine. And then it goes on from there. There's D, there's I, there's A, there's L, there's V. Each one of those individual letters is an abbreviation for an individual amino acid. So L is short for lysine, V is short for valine, A is short for alanine, and so on. For, there's a, a one letter abbreviation for all of the 20 amino acids. So I just wanted to show you what a gene is so you can sort of appreciate how the DNA is transcribed into a piece of messenger RNA and how that messenger RNA becomes processed, that precursor messenger RNA becomes processed to the final messenger RNA transcript that we looked at here, for instance, and then that's going to leave the nucleus and be translated by a ribosome out in the cytoplasm.